down the dugout steps with first base. McCutcheon's throw. The runner breaks to the plate. Here's the throw. Wow. He is out. You are listening to the North Shore 9 Podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, make sure to watch NS9 Live every Thursday on Twitch and help support by becoming a patron. Let's go, Bucks! Yo, yo, yo! Welcome to NS9 Live. I am your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, as usual, my co-host, Ryan Alexander. What's up, man? What up, what up, DiNardo? As mentioned, as usual, unfortunately, you weren't with us this week for the podcast, but we did have the bias Wilborn come in in the clutch. Well, I wouldn't say in the clutch. We, we were trying to set that up for a while. It looks like you had some difficulties uh, getting that set up. <laughs> that's that's what was clutch, to be honest. Oh, my God, Ron. I, I swear. So Sunday we tried. Monday we tried. Tuesday we finally got it. Man, that, was, that was the hardest, I think, podcast I've ever attempted. <laughs> and we've been doing this for like what five years right has it been five years <laughs> but, well it's on my end it's he, been about five <laughs> he, he said in that interview too like about you know is this is the off season because it's like especially with the pirates like so much stuff's been happening happening you know they fired pretty much the whole <laughs> the whole front office the manager everybody right They're hiring people they did two rounds of manager interviews with two different gms basically so yeah, but but sad news, Donardo. I, I I didn't I didn't get the manager job. I can't believe it. I can't the campaign, believe it. Did they not watch? The didn't Did come they not through. watch our our special? Come on, I bro. Have. I, I don't get it. I don't oh get it. Oh my I, I god. Think, I think I I spread my uh, my wings and to, to, to uh, by trying to get GM and the manager spot. It was too much. Mm. I should have just stuck with the manager's role. No, that's BS. That's BS. <laughs> you're just you're just such a unique person, Ryan. Such a talent. You know that I I mean, that just, was your selling point. You could be GM or you could be manager, or or both. G, the first ever GM manager slash player. Think about the money they could have saved. I mean, that's another selling point to Nutty. You just pay that's for right. one person, one they president. Already got, they're already paying for Hurdle, and then you're paying for just a GM and, and, and manager on one. You don't even need yep. a vice GM. Assistant, nothing. Just a you, bunch, no you know. bench coaches, just Ryan. Travis and Ryan, 2020. There you go. There you go. No, it didn't happen. But we, well, they, they, they got their man. So Derek Shelton, Donardo, after all this, you know, the first, you know, round of uh, the, the interviews Neil Huntington was doing, you know, Derek Shelton was sort of the favorite at that point from what we were hearing. Right. Huntington gets fired. Uh, they bring in, you know, Charrington. He does a whole round of interviews, and it's still Derek Shelton. So obviously, Derek Shelton wasn't scared away from the job by, you know, them switching GMs. <laughs> but at the end of the day, here we are before the winter meetings, and the Pirates have their guy. So, I mean, it's not. I wasn't surprised by this move. Um, you know, and then, and then they went out and hired uh, what Steve Sanders uh, from the Blue Jays that Charrington brought over. So. You know, we don't like I said. They're like, sh- go to Derek Shelton's Wikipedia page, Leonardo. There's not much on it. Like, not much is known about these guys. You know, we know what he's the positions he's held. He's been with the Rays. He's been with the Indians. He's been with the the Twins. You know, pretty successful, small market kind of kind of feel. Uh, we've heard well, from what we've heard, analytical guy. He's a hitting guy. So like, I mean, it's it's. Hey, the, I mean, the, listen, he's got the speed. The here. moves are. The what? The speed hitter. We know he's a yeah. great hitter. I mean, he's got his own product out there. Come on, bro. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but like, it's these moves are. are, are it's like you're. Aren't, aren't you more comfortable with these moves? Like, this is. It feels like it's the Charrington hiring was. It, it feels good. Derek Shelton. They feel like they got this right. Like it just, and then, you know, they bring Sanders over, which you're hearing a lot of, from people that he's an up and coming executive dude's young too. Dude's real young. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, I'm confident in these moves. Like it just, it makes sense and it feels right. Like they're, they're moving in the right direction. 
Yeah, uh, I'm totally with you. Like that's exactly what you said. Like I feel comfortable with them. We don't know what they're gonna do yet, but based on what you know of them and just based on the direction that you wanted to take this organization, the, to me, these are almost all the right hires. You know, like I said on the podcast this week, and I think you agree. I would have preferred Arnold from Milwaukee. Like that would have been my number one. And I think honestly, with everything said. If we got Arnold, that would have been the perfect offseason in my mind. Getting yeah. Charrington wasn't wasn't a terrible thing by any means. You know, that's not what I'm putting it. Um, I think in my eyes, I would have preferred Arnold. But hey, this is the decision they went. Charrington isn't by any means a bad get. You know, I mean, again, he was with the Red Sox, like you mentioned. He was won a World Series. He's with Toronto. He's built yep. farms. You know, so so hopefully this is definitely the red right hire. But I'm certainly optimistic. I feel comfortable with what's going on. Now I'm ready to see what they can do. It, and it'll be interesting to see how he uh, rounds out this coaching staff. And kind of interesting too with with the delays and everything, and him getting hired this this late into the off season. Like uh, most of the Twins, like coaching staff got uh, approached by other teams like <laughs> i know right uh, i think i think one went to the marlins as the hitting coach you know so it's like he can't really pull these guys that he's worked with the past uh, year or so but like i said he's worked with the blue jays he's worked or i'm sorry with the rays he's worked with the indians like he's been everywhere in the american he's been, league he's for, been every years he's been, been everywhere so too. So he knows some guys. That's right. He actually, yeah, he coached in their minor league system uh, as mm. the as a manager and stuff. So, yeah. So you know, he, he, I'm sure he knows a lot of guys. It'll be interesting to see how he rounds out this uh, this staff. But I, I had to I had to give some shade to the Pirates on. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about the press conference and everything. So I don't know. Uh, yesterday was it yesterday when they announced that? I think when he had the press conference yesterday or the other day, Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever. What day is today? Gee, this is Thursday already. I this don't week, even know. honestly, Ron, this week has flown for me, man. I have, I <laughs> honestly have no idea what day it is. It, it's, it's been a, cra- it's actually been a crazy, like two or three weeks for me. But this it's week has like been the, the pinnacle of it. Um, right. Yeah, when was the presser? I don't even remember. I think, it, I think it was yesterday. But anyway, the Pirates send the, you know, the link out. Like they sent a Periscope link out. MLB, you know, at bat sends a link out. <laughs> Periscope. You know, Facebook, Facebook Live. And oh, here's the press conference. I pull it up. There's no sound, Donardo. Yeah. And I go, okay, well, maybe I got my phone on silent. I'm messing with it. No, my phone's on. I'm like, oh, maybe my phone's like connected to my Bluetooth right now. No, it's on the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Nope. And then I start seeing the comments rolling in. Yo, Pirates, where's the sound? Yeah, the Pirates didn't have the sound turned on. Oh. Come on, bro. So this, thank God, Ryan, I swear, I tried scouring the internet for this damn presser because I couldn't see it live. Unfortunately, like uh, for the, for Charrington's presser, I was actually home for, I got to see it. Uh, I couldn't watch this live. So, and again, with my crazy ass week, I'm like, all right, I got to prepare for the show. Like I have a podcast. I got to at least know what I'm talking about. I'm scouring. I can't find something with sound. Honestly, tonight before the show, I spent 20 minutes. I thought my computer was messed up. And and here's the thing, Ryan. Hey. I'm running this show. I was worried because I thought I was going to mess up Twitch. I was trying to figure out why my computer ain't working and trying to get my nope. computer to work because of this damn video, which apparently has no sound. Thanks a lot, Pirates. Yeah. You had me all worried and stressed out. <laughs> right. No, it, was, it wasn't you. I was messing with my phone. Like, what's going on? What, what? So, <laughs> and, and then they they ended up. I think on Facebook they put a post out saying like, "Well, we apologize for the sound issues. We're working on it." So I don't. I like I tuned out. I mean, what at that point I'm just watching Derek and Ben sit at a table. I'm like, <laughs> right, you know, right. I, 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 it looked they looked great sitting next to each other. You know, it's like what what is going on? So I just tuned out. So I don't even know. I saw a clip later where he was talking about. He came into the airport and uh, you know, the, coming through the the tunnel to see the city and everything, and the cab driver was all pumped up about it. Uh, she, you know, he's like, "Make sure you check the skyline. Like, how the f are you gonna miss it coming through the tunnel?" But you know, did, so did he, he take like a cab about, or an Uber? He didn't say. He said the the cab driver, but he, he had no cool, cool story. Uber, right? Cool story, and Geddes can attest to this. I think so. I think Geddes is with us. Anyways, if not, then I guess not. But anyways. Uh, oh no, no, Ryan, you can. You're with us. That time I came home, for, we did a live podcast for my birthday when it was snowing. Yeah. Do you remember when we took the Uber back to the hotel and it was like Jim Leland's like nephew? 
Oh man, I I might have been in an intoxicated I mean, we, state. We, well, at we that all point were, there. but I, again, <laughs> I, I can't remember if you're with me or not. I think it, I think you I, were. I there. was, and and I. It I, was like his, his nephew or cousin or cousin twice removed. <laughs> yeah, I, all of a sudden I'm starting to. This is starting to sound familiar. Anyways, yeah. What, was, what if it was? What if it was that guy that that drove in Shelton? Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't like uh, you know Colin Dunlap or one of these idiots. Uh, oh, why you why'd you take the job with the Pirates? Uh, I don't know if I don't see Dunlap saying that. All right, maybe not Dunlap, but maybe just some Zeiss. Zeiss. You know, one of the Yinders on. Yeah, one of these Yinders Zeiss was complaining. Well, that would have been perfect for Zeiss. He was a cab driver. He would have popped up the video. They would have had a conversation. I'm surprised, I'm surprised <laughs> the fan didn't have a camera in there filming. Right, right. But no, so I, I, that's really the only clip I saw. I saw quotes, you know, all happy bleeping horse crap. But you know, hey, we're you know, it's going to be a fun clubhouse to be around. Was kind of his main point. Uh, he's excited about you know basically changing the culture in Pittsburgh, which is True. what Clint Hurdle did back in the day. But then he kind of lost the culture, right? Um, and keeping it fun. But, like, we're going to have fun. Right, right. And how about, so you, you kind of see, uh, and, I, and I don't know, I don't. apparently Musgrove still lives in, in Pittsburgh uh, year-round. But, dude, Musgrove's all over the place with Shelton. He was taking him to Permani Brothers, Market Square. They were going to a Pens game. <laughs> right. I was like, dude, Musgrove's over here, like, sucking up to the manager already. <laughs> well, think about it. When the hire happened, remember Musgrove's tweet? He was like, let's... Let's go. I forget all it was, but he was so pumped and excited yeah, about he's it. He's ready to get the brains in and start pitching. Right. And then, so like you're saying, like now you're seeing, I mean, Shelton comes in. I, I swear I had it, but the first person he saw was Joe Musgrove. Jo- and it's Joe Musgrove's birthday. It's his birthday, not Shelton's. Joe Musgrove right. spent his birthday like towning around the manager of Pittsburgh. And like with what you're saying, you're absolutely correct. Like, the, I mean, I guess I've seen him at home. He's tweeted things about being in, like in, in California, but. I see him so much around Pittsburgh and, and Penn's games. He was, he was and not just him, but Josh Bell the, was there too. The Stewart game. Yeah. yeah, he was still gaining for the Stewart game the other week. Donardo, like you just said, he lives in California. Why is he spending a winter in Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> like, right? What is going it's on the here? Opposite. So like, yo, Musgrove Joe, is, what are you doing Musgrove with your is, house? Wow. Can I can I stay over for a night? Something. Must actually is wild, isn't he near San Diego? We should help Joe. That's how we're getting to the the winter meetings this year. There you go. This shit, he'll probably be in Pittsburgh. Maybe That's we what I'm saying. It. So we can we can watch his house. Yeah, who knows? He might still have just be living at his parents' house and rents in <laughs> Pittsburgh. I don't know. There you but, go. But yeah, dude, Musgrove. Are you saying I, I, are you saying he's a, a podcaster who lives in his his parents' <laughs> basement? Speaking of which, where's Williams and where's the IMHO podcast? We got to get that going again. What the heck, guys? That's a good point. Um, I don't know. But but Musgrove, dude, like, and I, and I know just because he's going out for pizza and permanis with the manager doesn't make him a great player. We got to clear that up with the, for the Yenzers on Twitter. But, you know, Musgrove's wild, man. He, he's funny. But, yeah, he's he's all about Shelton. So that, that's, that's good news. Right. Yeah. I don't know. And that's the thing, too. It's just kind of weird because Shelton isn't a pitching coach by any means. No. You know? And, like, Joe's just completely ecstatic about it. You know? And, like, how's Joe crossed his path? You know, what's funny, I think Nabias is the one that mentioned it. If not, I heard it somewhere. But, like, Chris Archer was apparently, like, really, really excited. I think it was Nabias. Uh, and it's like he said, like, even though he was the hitting coach his time in Tampa, like, Shelton yeah, they, made they, an they, effort to get it, you know, to know Chris and – and this and that, and like yeah, so Chris Archer was like had all this excitement about him being there. So well, yeah, and that makes sense because yeah, they would have been they would have been on the same teams together, right? Um, it, when Archer was actually performing well, so maybe he'll rekindle something there. Maybe, um, but it sounds like he's just a fun dude. He's you know, it's yeah, you know, fun to be around. He's gonna have that kind of atmosphere in the clubhouse. So you know, hopefully, let's not let Crick run the music. Maybe, but uh, you know. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be a good atmosphere. So we'll see. Like you said, I mean, you know what? I'm, we're going to break down between Derek Shelton getting the job over somebody else that we don't know. Um, you know, it, it is what it is, and we're going to find out. But nobody knows how this is going to go. So let, let's bring something up. We just bring have it up. to. I mean, I, you can't just not see it. But as the picture shows here, here's Derek and his family. 
All right. Now, actually, let's start with this. The first thing, right? Oh, boy. And maybe this is I mean, just me being weird or whatever, but when they show this, I wasn't even thinking about this because obviously you're a manager. You, you, you get introduced and you put on a jersey, right? Did the Pirates <laughs> just like show and reveal their Nike jersey without actually doing it? As the first thing I saw, I was like, oh, dude, that's there's the jersey. Now, of course, nothing really changed, but like here's right. the Nike jersey. There's no red in it, so that's good. They haven't been revealed. So, yeah, the home jerseys, as we see, are pretty much the same. Of course, as we're seeing around uh, baseball, you got the Nike uh, symbol right here, you know, above the chest and such. So it's pretty much the same. But, yeah, that's actually the funny thing. My biggest takeaway when I first saw it, I said, whoa, the Nike jersey. And then, yes, the yeah. second thing, because, again, I'm weird. The second thing was, I mean, you know, Derek – He's a good looking guy. You know, I know a lot of people, a lot of women around Twitter have said how he's a pretty good looking guy, but come on. I'll, let me speak for the fellas. His wife's <laughs> also a pretty good looking person, too. Well, yeah, you had that picture of them on the field at Pittsburgh because they all came in and, uh, I, I, you know, I sent you the picture and I was like, which his son, his son is, is I think, like in his 20s, like, or at least, you know, he looks like he's older. Right. But I, I even like sent it to you and I was like, is his wife next to him or is <laughs> Which, she the one on the right side of the picture? Right. Cause I was like, they, there's like two, you know, ladies that look like they're adults and they're both good looking. And about I'm like, the same age. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, we just, you know, you just got Charrington with his wife who, you know, we, we talked about on yeah. the podcast and she's, she's easy on the eyes. And maybe it's uh, a bit, well, I, mean, I can't say Charrington's not a decent looking person either. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> right. Like, like, like but, the, in the, Point I'm getting at too with this, like we, again, we went from Neil and Clint Hurdle, you know, to like now Charrington and Shelton, you know, they're they're more swag, that's for sure, you know, better looking, right. and I mean, you know, their wives are pretty nice as well. Like we got some good looking people in Pittsburgh right now too. What a it representation! A, it's, it's funny. Like, do you ever remember seeing Hurdle's wife? No. Uh, yeah, or Neil. I mean, I, I actually asked, like, are they even married? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know Hurdle is because he talks about his family a lot, but right. Neil Huntington, I had no idea. I, I don't remember either. But yeah, Ben's got the uh, he's got you know his girl his he's got a baseball girl basically. You know what was her? She was named after Ty Cobb, and her yeah. dad was a scout. So yeah, she's got ties, and uh, yeah, the Shelton family they're all in. Man, as, they're all as in dinosaur so. shoddy says, it is a very good looking family, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they did okay. They did okay. Got some good representation in Pittsburgh. So, so there we go. So we got our we got our guys, man. They're running the team. He he hired uh, you know uh, Steve Sanders as the assistant GM. So we're starting to fill fill some of those positions out. Keeping Larry Broadway around, uh, Donardo, which I kind of did a like a yikes gif on that one. Is like uh, you know I guess he sees something in him, but it's kind of one of those. I don't want any ties from the former, you know, like yeah. like pirate scouting department, but uh, whatever. We'll, we'll see. I mean, in a perfect world, like what you're saying is absolutely correct. I mean, the majority of the front office is gone, especially like, I mean, the ones that I don't want to say really matter because obviously Broadway like really matters. But like, you know, like the, the big heads, they're gone. So with new people in, like you're saying, I don't know, like if you're looking and say, hey, it's Larry Broadway. He's cool with him. You know, I, I rather would have I would rather have Larry Broadway here based on the opinion of this regime than have Larry Broadway here because the old regime said so. You know, if that makes sense. Like right. I'm with you, I'd rather have like a, a complete turnover. But if the new regime comes in and says, Let's keep Larry Broadway, I'm with it. Right. There's there's probably something there. Right. So we'll we'll see. Like I said, I, I was like uh, not the greatest. I'm not the biggest fan of that move, but I'm I'm open to it here. I'm I'm willing to, you know, to <laughs> okay. give it a shot. And like I said, the I mean, fact that DK reported that he was fired and he wasn't makes me want Larry Broadway there even more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Plus, like it, it's weird too because like Neil Huntington went through those manager interviews, and Derek Shelton was the the front runner basically from what we were hearing. And, you know, here he basically ended, ended up interviewing with two GMs. So, really, your former GM probably was going to hire the same manager as it was anyway. So, it really comes down to Charrington and, and kind of the people he places around him. Right. Um, 
and, and he started making some some moves that Ardo's we can get into too, um, you know, briefly, and we'll dive kind of more into it on the pod on Sunday. But uh, I think his first trade, D- Dario Agrizol, he gone. He goes to the Tigers for cash. The so, Tigers, they love sorry yeah. ass pirates. <laughs> I know. It's like Jay Hay, Jordy Mercer. Right. Then again, we took we took Brandon Inge off them, so that was kind of a sorry ass move back also in the day. Also, move the ladies loved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So Agrizol, and that's I mean, like a lot of people, it's like, oh, you know, we talked about this last last year when Agrizol came up and had a couple good starts. It's like. I mean, you, you didn't – it was like pitch to contact, didn't strike a lot of people out. Like, I wasn't that high on Agrizol. A lot of people were just wanted him in there because it was the unknown. It was something different. But, you know, it was like, well, why trade him for cash? We need pitchers like that. Well, this is exactly like Ben's got a plan, and, and this was one of his first moves. But just because, you know, there could be a guy – there's going to be multiple guys that other people like and they think that could be addition – you know, good – good pieces on this team right. but if it's not a guy that Cheerington feels is good for this team he gone yeah. you know so we're going to see a lot of that like and it, it's something yeah. we mentioned when it happened as well and again like I, I don't really care that he's gone i mean he's just part the thing is i don't see agrizol being part of the solution he's part of the problem part of the problem is we have a bunch of agrizols on the team we need right. high quality we pitchers better. you know we, we need, need some strikeout that. guys oh. So, you know, keeping him around to me was nothing. I mean, for every Agra's all we have, I mean, there's 10 others there. You know, so some things I want to run down as well, like you're mentioning, uh, I mean, the guy struck out, Ryan, 12.8% batters. Now, small sample size in the big leagues this year, but still, like, he doesn't strike out anyone. And, and that's truly, like, year over year, that's about what he does. I mean, 12 point, I'm sorry, that's... Um, it's always in the teens, like a 14.3, 13.8, 12.5, 16, 14, 6. Like, he doesn't strike out many guys. Like, I know he doesn't walk people, but he doesn't strike right. people out. And, and let's be real, too. Like, his minor league numbers in 2018 in high A, his ERA was, oh, my bad, in double A, a 3.98. He moves up to, uh, in 2019, double A again, three, 360. And then he moves up to triple A, and it's a 4.78. Like it wasn't like he was doing numbers in these in the minor leagues either. You know, he right. was just a mad pitcher there. He comes up and he gets exposed. Like losing him was nothing. And people that were going crazy because oh my god, they're they're getting cash. The pirates are still cheap. Come on. The fact that you got <laughs> same any, old pirates. Right. The fact that like anyone was willing to give you money for this guy, I'll take whatever. Right. Because right. as far as the pirates goes, he was expendable. We don't need him. Go be gone. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, he came up. He he really shouldn't even have been pitching in Pittsburgh if not for all these injuries. So he really, you know, shouldn't even have been here yet. And you know, hey, if if Charrington's going to be starting to bring on guys to acquire, you got to clear some from some you know some forty man spots. Right. And, and I, you know, I think that's that's a lot of what this was. And like you said, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not crying over losing Agrizol. I don't think it's a I think it's really a non-move. I don't think. But you're he's, hitting he's, that on the head. You want to improve the team. You right. don't need more agrizols. You need better. So get rid of the problems. Start getting the solutions. Yes, there's that, no problem with this move. And that's what I'm interested in is when he starts the you know acquiring players. Uh, just you know this agrizol I think was just kind of a let's move him around, get open a space or two. And, and let's see where we go here, you know, if we deal with some players and whatnot and, and pull in some extra uh, prospects or players or, or what have you. But uh, then we can get into, you know, the the non-tender deadline and everything, um, bringing everybody back except for Diaz, who was non-tendered. Mm. And, uh, I mean, it's another one. It, it's just something that, you know, it was like, well, who's going to play catcher now? Stallings or anybody else? Diaz wasn't <laughs> good last year. Diaz basically got exposed by the more he started, you know, with the injuries that Cervelli had. And when it ended up becoming Diaz's season, it was it was his, his year as a starter. And he wasn't good, Donardo. And even the, the strong part of his game, which was the defense and the arm behind the plate. Right. It wasn't good. Right. He was all over the place. Yeah. Um, I can tell you how many, how many times did he throw down a third and bomb it into left field? How many times the first? You know, so he loved he loved so, throwing back the first, which I don't hate. I liked the aggressiveness of it, but it it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. 
it, it's one of those, hey, obviously Ben, you know, they scouted, didn't didn't feel he was the guy they want to move forward in, in that in that position, and, and he's gone. So, like I said, we're going to see some moves like that because mm-hmm. just because – and even if he was like a – I wouldn't say like they're getting rid of Reynolds tomorrow, but even if it was a player that was productive and, you know, somewhat good – if it's not the GM, if he doesn't want him, then he's going to look to try to get rid of him. And why bring him back? Probably didn't think he'd get anything in the trade market for him or or whatever. So, and, and as I, I think it was uh, somebody, I think it was Evil Neal that tweeted out basically his his war, which was like, you know, was, point was, zero three or point, I think it was worse point than that. three or something. I think it was almost a one. I think it was like negative point point nine or point eight. It was bad. Uh, okay. it, it was bad. <laughs> like basically, like his point was, you could pick up. You know, almost any free agent catcher, and and have a like a Diaz or better than Diaz. Like he was replacement level, if yeah. if, if at all. So well, like, like think about Diaz's like course, right? He was touted as the the future. You know, glove first, had a bat uh, that can come. We never really saw the bat, but the glove was like superb, supposedly, right? Yeah, uh, he finally gets like his true shot last year, Ryan. And, and honestly, he shocked everybody. Like the bat, like it was like a bat first guy. The glove was okay, which is the funny thing is, like the glove was okay. The bat is what really stood out. And I think he tricked a lot of us because again, it was kind of a small sample. You know, he still was a top ten prospect the whole time, so y- you felt something was there. Like he was part of the future. We just didn't know exactly what it was. And he tricked us. And like you said, like last year, he was completely exposed. The bat was pathetic. But even worse, the glove was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Everything defensively was bad. You know, and it's like if you're not at least a good glove, you can't be a la Chris Stewart, right? No bat, but at least have a good glove. You work well with the pitchers. You're a backup catcher in this league. You know, like Reese McGuire, say what you say about that trade. Regardless, like he's going to be a catcher in this league for a while just because he has a good glove. He'll probably be a number two catcher, but a number two catcher has value, you know, as Chris Stewart did. But when you don't have anything, Ryan, like there's no reason to keep in Diaz. Like you're saying, right. like literally you could get anybody right now and it'd be better. And with that said, you're looking to the future. Diaz blooms late as well. I mean, I think he's 28, right? Going on 29, maybe something like that. Yeah, so, yeah he's no spring said, chicken. Like, he's, he's not good. And he's not young either. So Stallings actually showed out last year and defensively. Yeah. And, you know, Diaz, would you like to have him as a backup? Sure. But, I mean, he was, his well, estimated salary was $1.4 million. I mean, you're going to pay, you know, $1.5 million to basically a, a backup. But to answer your question, you're saying, would you like him as a backup? And that's debatable. That's where we're at. You're debating if you want this right. guy as a backup catcher. Yep. That's where we stand on a bad team, on a bad team. <laughs> yeah, you know. So it's not like you have yeah. a good catcher, uh, you know, leading the way in the depth chart. So you know, at one point four million, and keep a guy that's you're not even sure is even in this like on this team. Period. No. I'm not shocked by that one bit. Um, I did want to say a few things, Ron. Just keep up with the chat. So, Dinosaur Shade. So, yeah, he does ask: Are there any known candidates for the pitching coach? Haven't really heard any names so now around. Um, I want to be honest. That was one question I did want to ask Nabias, but we didn't really get to. But I'm with you. I haven't heard anything. We know how the Pirates have always been a tourist, like solid shut. You don't hear stuff. Um, I, I really right. don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, we talk. It, who knows? I mean, Shelton's been like we talked about the teams in the American League that he's been with. So, yeah, I'm sure he's got a number of guys that you know he's targeting. Um, like I said, is it somebody that's in the Twins organization that he just re- most recently worked with? Um, I don't know, and I haven't heard any names getting thrown out or anything yet. So, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, yeah it's that's it's a tough one. And like I said, we don't even know if Eckstein's going to keep the hitting coach job. You know, if him and Shelton have, you know, if they have basically two different mindsets on what the hitting coach position should be, and Shelton just had that position for how many years? Um, <laughs> what, you know? what if what if Eckstein left like some nasty review on Speed Hitter? He's like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This machine's terrible. <laughs> do you have, by the way, do you have that clip to play? Um, I don't have it to play, actually. 
That's great. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, go look up uh, what yeah. Derek Shelton. What is it? We'll, speed hitter. We'll play. We'll play it. Actually, the audio part on the podcast this week. Okay. I don't want to do the video because as people are actually watching it right now, see. Uh, again, with this whole freaking Mac beta issue, like the videos don't come out. They come out choppy. So uh, I said, you and this it. beta, man, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> actually the reason why this freaking Tobias interview took so long. Uh, and the other question or comment he does have is, thank the Lord no more Diaz so we can stop hearing he's the catcher of the franchise. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Now it's stalling. <laughs> um. But the the other the other non tender they could have done Donardo was Eric Gonzalez. Instead, they they re signed a one year deal. Um, you know, hopefully as utility. Uh, I don't you know I don't think he's starting at shortstop or anything. I mean, at that point you have Newman right. or even Cole Tucker. Um, but you know, as a utility, can kind of play everywhere. Maybe knock your center fielder out out, out for a month. Um, you know, why not? Our new center fielder because Mark Day's traded. Uh, like th- the thing about this, I think everyone knows that's listening how we feel about that boy Eric Gonzalez. But I don't hate this. Um, it's not terrible. It, it kind of is what it is. He's on the cheap. You're not like the expectations this year are totally different from last year. Even for the people yeah. that felt they weren't going to be good, like the front office had expectations that were at least going to be competitive. I don't really think those are the same expectations this year. So why not try to keep him and see if there's some future in him? Uh, and if right. not, again, he's cheap. I mean, the, the thing is, too, like he could be gone by spring training. Even though you agree to some contract, th- th- you could literally cut him. So the fact right. that he's still there for this cheap deal, I, I don't really care at this point. Right. No, I hear you. And, yeah, it's like I said, if he's – I was fine with the trade when it happened. If he, yeah, if yeah. he was not going to be the starter at shortstop, which he turned out to be, <laughs> so that's why I didn't like I didn't like how the result came about. But the trade, no, I mean the trade was whatever. But yeah, as utility, I, I could see some value in him, but we'll see. Um, you mentioned Marte briefly, Donardo, and I know you talked about this uh, with Nubias on the pod last week or this week, but. Uh, and I, 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 as soon as as soon as he gave his his thoughts on it, which if you haven't listened, you can go back and listen on the pod uh, North Shore Nine. They, you know, I knew I knew your stance on it, and when he when he kind of said like, yeah, hey, he can't, he can't be going out and saying that, and you kind of like, uh, and I, I said I knew it. I said Donardo don't agree, and I'm with you. I don't agree either. Uh, you know, to me, and, and he mentioned it too. It was a translated interview, which is number one right there. You got to kind of take it with not a grain of salt, but it might be a little bit of things lost in translation. Um, you know, when you get past DK's ridiculous headline, mm-hmm. uh, Marte wants out of Pittsburgh. No, no, you know? actually, I don't think DK's was too egregious. It was the someone else. It was like WTAE or whatever, KDK. So, yeah, some some well, but news I mean, they, outlet I think, put out yeah, Marte they, wants they out it. or wants traded. Yeah, DK's was close, DK's I think. Article. So I'm not going to give him too much. because uh, uh, Trust me, we love to give him shit. I'm not going to give him too much this time. There was another one that was completely absurd. Can't remember which one it was, though. Yeah, but I mean, I think they took it from his initial report and everything. Um, but anyway, I mean, basically, look, they asked him a question. He answered it. Um, and, you know, all, we, all he said was, they, they, I think they specifically asked him about the Mets. Like, oh, what, you know, basically the question was something like, you know, what would you think if, you know, the, you were traded to the Mets or would you want to be dealt to the Mets, something like that. You know, he basically said, well, why, you know, I'd, I'd want to I want to go somewhere where, you're, where we're, you know, we have a chance to win. And didn't say like, oh, screw Pittsburgh. Like if the chance to win is here, you know, it could be Pittsburgh. But basically answer that question, which was directed. It was a Mets directed question. So. You know the guy's over thirty. Um, you know he's he's not younger. He's you know he's been in the playoffs with the Pirates. I, I don't think him saying that hey I want to win right now is anything to like bash him about. And, and Ben Charrington yeah. even you know uh, was quoted at that presser uh, yesterday, basically saying, "Oh, good, I want my player. I want players to that want to win." You know now mm-hmm. whether he. 
you know, whether it didn't really help him out in the trade market if he is looking to trade him is another thing. But Ben basically said, you know, he didn't have an issue with it. Like, he wants the players to be competitive and want to win. Right. So, and, and he even said in there, he said, if, if I don't get traded and I don't go to the Mets or whatever, I'm going to work, you know, as hard as ever with the Pirates. So I, I just think a lot of it was taken out of context was, you know, it was a translated interview, which is one thing. And I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have one. I don't have one, you know, negative thing. I, I don't have any problem with one thing that he said out of that. It's just, it is what it is. Um, yeah. I mean, like, like you kind of mentioned, hearing, you know, our conversation, um, I'm pretty okay with it. And it's personally, like, you know, one of the things that Nabiah said was, you know, how do you come back from that? How do you go back to your teammates? And, and that's why I wanted to say, like, I felt like he said what's on his mind, but in a respectable manner as well. You know, he said, well, the question was, would you, how do you feel about the trade of the Mets? You know, do you want to go there, whatever? And he was honest, you know, and he did say, like, I mean, that's a team that's ready to compete. You know, I want to win, and I, I, I would like that. You know, if I was on the Mets, I'd be good with that. But, right. like you say, counterpart, if I'm still in Pittsburgh, I'm going to work my tail off, and I'm going to be the best player that I can be for whomever team. You know, so that, like, to me, like, as a teammate, and that's what I was trying to say. I, I mean, that it was almost like the way we bonded was because, like, I, I want to say this in the right way. You know, like, we, we spited our coach, and I don't think he listens, so I hope he's not, but... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Great but it was alive. almost like we played together in spider coach and we were bad, but that was like what gelled us together in a sense. And, and I know what he's getting at. Like these are, listen, I'm not trying to compare myself to starting Marte. I played high school. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to say that you, you were trying to get traded in a shit. <laughs> I know. But what I'm trying to say is like, I can probably say that there's people on that team that feel like, especially last year, what they went through, they're kind of fed up. Um, again, like let's look up back to Jay Hay, like the quotes he said. Where are we coming from? Like, think about that. Like everyone, like, like Garrett Cole. You know, I'm sure there's talk. I'm sure they all felt this ownership sucks. You know, we're not going to win because of them. Like we're here in spite of them. Like we want to win. We're good, but in spite of them. You know what I mean? Like that's how I kind of feel. Like I feel there could be some gelling and bonding with them, knowing that like, man, this sucks. You like we could be so much better. Why can't they give us more support and this and that, right? So, like hearing him say, "If I were to get traded, I would like that." You know, the Mets are in a better position to compete, which they are. They are. So Look everybody last gets year, injured in June. You know, like they were much better, and they're still in a better position than the Pirates right now. But if I'm here, like, listen, bro, I'm gonna compete. Like, if I'm still in Pittsburgh, like I love Pittsburgh. You know, like there's he's never bashed the city. He's never disappoint anyone other than Colin Dunlap and maybe some other media members who think he's a liability. You know, like he's been here and he's he's played his best ball and I don't think that's going to change. So, you know, I didn't take away from this like, no, man, get me out of Pittsburgh. This place sucks. <laughs> I, I didn't Dude. really have, I didn't have issue with it and I truly, no. truly believe deep down, even though what Nabai said, and I can agree with, yes, he wasn't wrong, but maybe he wasn't right. Sure, he could have get the P, like the the PC thing, like ah, oh, you know, it's all ownership. I'm I'm here to do a job. He gave the truth. He gave his right. truth, and he gave it in a respectable manner. But I don't I don't think there's no way he can come back from that. I think on March 28th, whatever day it is, they're opening up that he's a, if he's a member of the Pirates, he's a full member of the Pirates. And he has full respect of the team. Yeah, and, and you even said it on the pod, uh, you know, during that interview was. I think the I think his teammates would agree to him to an extent, you know. Here, you know, yes, we want to be somewhere we're going to win, whether that's here or somewhere else. But I think I think they get it to the fact that you know he was asked a question directly about that trade, you know, about a possible trade to the Mets. I, I think his teammates would understand where he was coming from. He gave an honest answer. Um, you know, was he going to say, ah, you know, if I'm traded to the Mets, I'm going to I'm not going. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like, I'm not going to show up. So I think he get you know he gave an honest answer, and I, I think his teammates being and they they've had they've had those questions. You know, they they know what the questions of the media are, are like, and you know maybe it was an off season interview. He was caught off guard. You know, and, and like I said, so 
I really don't think – I think they understand that situation a lot better and that mm-hmm. they're not like thinking, oh, this guy wants out of here now. Yeah. No, I think it's the reality of the thing. It, it makes sense. He's probably going to be traded. And, and so, here's, a, here's a comment. It actually puts it in a good context here. So, yeah, with how much this city's media bashes and trashes Marte, he doesn't say a word. And that's kind of like – where we're getting at, I mean, it, it's true. Like he, he's never, he's never sending a negative. Like it, it, there has been negative things that happened to him. Like he did have the steroid thing, but he, he <laughs> owned, like he owned up to it. You know, I'm not trying to say like what he did was right. He was a liability to the team that year because of what he did, and he was wrong for taking right. steroids. But never did he deny it. Did he shy away from it? He took ownership. He took responsibility. Like he's always done everything the right way. You know, think about right. That. Like he's always done everything the right way. I don't think there's any problem with what he said amongst the team. Maybe initially, like maybe that first, like that shock value. But come on, spring training, spring training, you all show up. You're all teammates. You're all brothers. They're there. If he's still there, which hopefully he's not, because that's the right decision. <laughs> I was going to say, at the end of the day, it's probably not going to matter because he's going to be gone. Right. But, yeah, it's like I don't think his teammates are going to look you know, like, oh, I'm not talking to him this year. You know, it, it, I think it's just a non-issue. And like you said, I, I'm with you. I didn't take issue with anything he said. And it just cracks me up, you know. You get, you know, like you said, KDK or whoever it was, they throw out the headline, oh, Marte wants out here or whatever. And then you have the fans diving in. And it's like, you know, it, it's just, I, I thought it was a non issue. I thought he gave an honest answer. And I, I just can't believe it became the story that it did. Uh, you know, I, I guess it's the off season, but, uh, well, you know, we've had a lot going on. So it's not like it's a slow news day or something. But nah, I mean, it, it makes sense. And he's probably gone. So. Uh, no, right. it might not be the Mets because they got you know they just picked up uh, Marisnik, so uh, who knows? Yeah, now, how, how about that? How about that? They they go for the cheap option. They go for like the Keon Broxton options last year. Let's get Jake Marisnik. He's better than Keon. I'll give you that. He's definitely a defender. He he could have some. I mean, he has sneaky pop, but I, I think that seals it. Like they they went cheap. And, and I mean, here my who am I as a pirate fan to call someone cheap? But the Mets went. They right. went Wilpon. They went cheap. They got Jake Marisnik instead of Marte. But regardless, that takes another team out. Maybe it's the White Sox. Maybe it's still the Phillies, San Diego. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, that's one less team right now for Marte. Uh, I feel like this free agency, which has been pretty – has been active, uh, you know, more so in the past two years. I feel like it's just the Braves and Reds, <laughs> like, signing people. The Braves are just, like, spending money like uh, – Chicago is doing some things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they have. Um, well, you know, they wanted to give Machado 300, you know, 200 and some million last year. So True. they got it to spend, apparently. Um, give it the call. No, no, no. How about, how about the old brew crew? Speaking of going cheap. Now – I'm going to go into a little more detail on this on the podcast Sunday. Okay. So tune in. But yeah, we got to save something for Sunday. Jeez. But Donardo, <laughs> the I was told the Brewers were a real team. They were a small oh, market team. Every year I'm told some team's a real team. They and were a small market this team happens. that spent money. They were competitive. They went out and spent money. They picked up Yellage. They got Kane. They won why can't that be the Pirates? The Indians, they were a real team. They were small market. They did all this stuff. They were competitive. Why can't the Pirates? Well, Donardo, the Indians haven't done anything. And the Brewers, they're they're dropping and trading and cutting guys left and right. Yeah. They, yeah. They've slashed they, like they, 60 million so far. They have. They have slashed 60 million. Um, just letting people go. Too much money. And uh, haters on the block as well. I, I mean, listen, I'm not going to totally, totally, totally bash 80, them. It's going to be a complete mock. Team. They're still set as a decent organization. You know, they cut some dead weight. Maybe they're going to reinvest it. We'll see. But like Maybe you are saying, pitching. as of right now, as we're looking at this club, there's been a lot of productivity that's no longer with this club. And uh, if you're trading yeah. hater... Uh, you know, I mean, that bullpen's been shaky for some time, too. That's your best piece. I'm not saying it's a terrible move to do it, but 
you're you're right. There's a lot of people leaving this club right now. Well, Donardo, it's almost like when you go out and you get Yellich and you sign Lorenzo Cain, it's almost like, oh, you're a small market team and you don't have unlimited funds. So, oh, now we got to cut back a little bit. It's almost like what the Pirates did after, uh, you know, 15 and 16. So, just saying. I know. Saying. I know. Remember when the <laughs> Reds were a real team last year? Right, and they they they, they went out and signed uh, Mustakas. Oh, from the deal. Brewers. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What'd oh, you think, and that sixty-four about that deal? million dollar deal, the largest in uh, Reds history. What'd you What'd you think about that? Um. So here's what I think about it. Congratulations to Mike Mustakas because he's been going through a lot of itch for a few years. So, right. dude, finally gets his money. Kudos to you. All right. Uh, he's in Cincinnati, which means he's going to be facing the Pirates even more. And he's in Cincinnati, so he could put up 50 home runs. Um, that's, a, that's a solid signing. But this isn't like four years, $64 million two years ago. You know, it's a little bit older now. Still not a bad signing in my eyes, especially again in that club. But he's going to play second base, apparently still. So Christ. not that he didn't put up. Good numbers a second is is positive. Uh, I'm just wondering how long that's going to carry over. Hopefully not right. well. <laughs> right. It, it's funny. Like the, he just ends up being like the same player every year. Like yeah, you know, you kind of you always doubt it, and you're like, good. yeah, is he gonna... and then he's like the same player. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like he's never like he's never great. I, I feel it's been, maybe except for like one year, he's like always very underrated. And it proves right. by the contracts he gets. But, you know, it's right. like at the end of the year, when you look at the numbers and you're just like, wow, that was Mike Moustakis? Like, that was pretty good. <laughs> he, he ain't going to do it next year, but that was pretty good. And then he does yeah, it next he, year. He won't, and then he does it next year. He won't do that again. Right. Yeah, he had the four. He had the, well, this is baseball reference, but he had the four war season in 2015. And, you know, okay, had a couple years, okay, scuffled. Then last year, 3.2 uh, war. So, I mean, and the power has pretty much been there. The a past second baseman. Yeah. You know, like think about it's that. Crazy. It's a second baseman right. who could pop off like 40 plus home runs. He's been a solid defender most of his career. Like mm-hmm. you said, at, at third and now apparently at second. So, yeah, the Reds, the Reds making moves, making things happen. We'll it's a good sign. We'll it's a good sign. We'll see. Here, here's what I say about the Reds. <laughs> that's that's what I that's what I got for the Reds. I like it. I like it. How about Zach Willow to the Phillies? 118 million, five years. It was funny because you know our our friend Jared, big Braves fan, and I I texted him when uh, Cole Hamill signed the one year deal to Atlanta. Nice. Yep. And I was like, ooh, I was like, Cole Hamill, 18 million. I said, like, I don't know. And then. Uh, He's like, well, he replaces Keiko. You know, I was like, yeah, it's a good boy. And then, like, boom, like f- five hours later, the, <laughs> the Phillies land Wheeler. And I was like, boy, that Hamill's deal ain't, ain't looking as good. <laughs> um, you but, know, what's funny is, yeah, that Hamill's deal got a lot of hate on Twitter. I, I really didn't mind it. I, I really didn't. I mean, $18 million, like, he, he has bounced back. Since he got traded to the Cubs, I mean, think about that tremendous second half he had at the trade deadline we went to the Cubs was great and of course everyone's giving him the Mike Moustakas deal yeah okay but prove it again well last year was pretty solid um so like you're gonna invest by only being a one-year deal it's kind of like the Donaldson thing you know like no yeah. he's not gonna be like this four or five one player I'm sure but I feel he's gonna be solid and it's only one year you know so you're gonna pay a little up, up front for that I, I I didn't mind the deal at all if I was the Braves I would have tried to re-up Donaldson for Two, three more years. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Donaldson's a beast. Who knows? Maybe they are. Maybe maybe, maybe Charrington's giving him a call. No. <laughs> Get on the phone, Ben. It's, it's not <laughs> happening. But anyways. I love Donaldson. I love him. But, yeah, so we're seeing some moves, man. The Phillies, night, though. Night they, dinosaur. Yeah. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> okay, Boomer. Yeah, they – but, no, the Phillies, I mean, they – 
they have the money to spend because they didn't they didn't they didn't keep uh, Harper around or couldn't. And or not, they they have Harper. What am I talking about? They they still are spending money even with Harper. Right. So yeah, they they might be capped out though, but they needed a, they needed a pitcher to add to that staff because some of the young arms. I mean, Nola kind of took a step back, and I mean, what F? Well, just some of those guys didn't really take the step forward. I think they were they were banking on. So true. And I mean, he got Jake Phillies, He gets JT Real Muto. He's gonna get Sully Marte in the outfield. I like it for I like it for Zach Wheeler. You know, he's got nice. all the pieces around him to be really successful and stick it back to the Mets. Nice. <laughs> I know we could talk about Sunday, Donardo. Yeah, uh, Marte for, for Hasley. Well, there you go. Or we could talk about some of the other non tenders around baseball that are very interesting. Yes, yeah, like Travis Shaw. Some of, yeah, I was thinking more Tajon Walker, but Oh, and that him too, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I love myself some walkers, so we'll see. I don't know. We'll see what Ben, Professor Ben does. Can we talk about Alex Stumpf real quick? Alex Stumpf? Yeah. Sure. Our our assistant GM, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> tell me, tell me this isn't Alex Stumpf in a few years. I mean, look at that. That's Alex with some swag, like an actual real haircut. An actual haircut. Yeah, that, that is Alex Stump right there. <laughs> yeah, I saw your I saw your tweet when you had that out, and it's like, right. yeah, I could see it. <laughs> yeah, but but Ryan, let's be real. Shout out to the real Steve Sanders from nine hundred two one zero. There he is. There's our assistant GM, baby. Oh my. Hollywood, all these nice looking uh, people in Pittsburgh now. They're younger, that's why we're all we're going young, young, yes, young and hot. <laughs> it's it's gonna be lit. I swear, M- uh, yeah, MTV might have a, a TV show pretty soon on the Pirates. It's gonna be called The Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> gonna put all Let's the front office in a house. Oh God, <laughs> this is going off the rails now. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Yeah, I think I think we could shut it down. We got to save some stuff for Sunday. Shut it down. All right. So yeah, this Sunday we'll be back with a podcast. Sunday we promise, right, Ryan? Do we promise that? Promise. It is going to be. Wait, what's the Sunday night game? Who cares? It is the winter meetings eve this Sunday. This is literally like my favorite week of the year, and hopefully it's going to be good again. There's going to be stuff happening, even though we're not freaking there again, Ryan. I blame you again. Mm, you could have went, Smitty. I could have. But, uh, yeah, so Winter Meetings Eve. We'll have a good show this uh, this uh, Sunday. And then, um, yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. So I guess until then, we'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Peace.